So welcome back to the Wisdom Factory. I'm Heidi Hanlen and I'm living in Italy, but I'm German. And I have found it with my uh, late husband, uh, the Wisdom Factory.net, uh, where we have conversations with mainly integral people. And this year, again, will be the conference in Hungary, Integral European Conference. And I was there the very first time six years ago and also the second time four years ago and two years ago, I couldn't go because my husband was about dying. So it was not a good time, but I will go there again. And so I also give a presentation about the common um, topic we had into uh, conscious aging or integral aging, you can say that too. And when I looked through the presenter list, I saw, oh, there is somebody from Italy. It's Carlo Cecchetti. And so I contacted him and I thought we could do some conversation in preparation for the conference. And so I have him here now. And hello, Carlo. And say hello. <laughs> hello. Thank you for having me. Yeah. And you are in England. So you are sort of uh, expert Italian. <laughs> well, uh, I I am in, in this moment. Uh, I was born in Italy, obviously, but uh, it's quite obvious. <laughs> and um, in this moment, uh, I am talking from uh, Charles Darwin' uh, birthplace, which is called uh, Shrewsbury. It's mm -hmm. a town in the Midlands, uh, in uh, this uh, very rural uh, county called the Shropshire. Okay, so you are expert in uh, in the UK, like I'm German expert in Italy. <laughs> Wonderful. So you have a very interesting topic, but before we go into that, it's integral gardens, you know. Mm, who knows what that is? We will see. Before we go into the topic, can you tell me a little bit about you, where you are coming from, and then maybe also why you are interested in integral, and then also in gardens and Let's see where we go from here. Thank you. Well, the, our journey, uh, collective in our family back in Italy, we go back for a few generations now into the ornamental um, gardening. And I am at the third generation now uh, working in this industry. And uh, since uh, my father, my grandfather, uh, we were all being involved uh, in uh, different uh, aspects of this industry, from um, landscaping, uh, setting up orchards, uh, running a garden center, uh, doing garden design, uh, building gardens, uh, the maintenance of the garden, uh, and the relationship with the customers. So the integral gardens, uh, like uh, quite often, it does happen with uh, people uh, who step into the integral arena. It comes from a personal journey, from a personal healing. And so into integral gardens is the result of the support, the solutions that I found over the years uh, doing uh, mainly constellation work over the last 10 years. And um, the family uh, situations from the past, the challenges that the previous generations had to do with the collective situations in Italy, in Europe, that led to the events of uh, our life and my life. Uh, they have been calling me to do this uh, inner work on myself over the years. And the result uh, of this uh, search, of this uh, inner journey, it started uh, seven years ago to come up uh, clear about uh, bringing the systemic work, the integral approach into the gardening environment. And uh, the, the essence of our work, uh, it can be really summarized uh, in a sentence uh, that uh, we build, uh, we bring the physically in a client garden, uh, the customer, uh, the family tree is in a garden. Mm -hmm. So at first sight, integral gardens 
you know, when you hear it, you say, whoops, what is that? A garden is a garden. What is integral about the garden? And before I ask this question, how did you meet integral? By your journey? Well, it started, um, uh, it was about 10 years ago because uh, personally I was going through some uh, difficult times, uh, personally, in myself, uh, and I had uh, quite an amount of uh, unresolved uh, situations from the past. And uh, I always been believing that it had to do with myself. And uh, during the years, uh, contacting people, uh, especially here in England, uh, mainly London, there is a, now a consolidated environment of uh, constellators and systemic uh, facilitators here, which is quite strong. And so I've been contacted for my personal reasons, for my own challenges, uh, that at the time uh, I could not uh, see, I could not imagine that uh, the challenges, the difficulties I was facing, uh, in actual fact, they were uh, gifts from the family tree. It was uh, a support in disguise for going forward. But at the time, I was uh, reverting against myself because uh, I was coming from uh, a linear approach, from uh, a mind approach, which was not the real. Yeah, which is normal, no? Uh, we are probably, almost all of us are coming from that. And then at a certain point, yes. we might discover integral and then we think, oh, that changes everything. I wonder if yes. it was also yes. for you. And, uh, coming uh, from uh, the previous generation's approaches that we all have, uh, I was coming from uh, a mental, a linear approach. So doing work over the years on my own challenges, uh, I started to discover uh, going through the family tree, the impact that people had uh, over the generations uh, and the amount of uh, wounds uh, unresolved, uh, the amount of situations that have been not... Uh, acknowledged from the past generations. Mainly in our case, uh, it had to do with the communism and the fascism in Italy. Mm -hmm. And uh, these situations, uh, we saw that impacted deeply on our family today. So the result uh, of uh, these uh, contrasts, uh, the result uh, of uh, these situations uh, led to Integral Gardens. Uh, when the dust started to settle down, uh, it started to come a clarity to me that uh, the solutions I discovered, uh, the challenges of the past, they were uh, offering a way forward, a different way forward. And to me, it started to become clear that uh, in my profession, uh, in uh, our family situation, uh, this could be an offer to a customer to reflect uh, their own uh, situations, their own family trees, uh, challenges uh, or wishes or the desires uh, as a garden design, uh, as a, a service, to be in service or something bigger. Mm -hmm. And so it started to come to me this uh, call, to answer this call that uh, today is clear to me that has been in a family system for generations. He has been waiting to be seen, to be acknowledged. So let me ask you, uh, you are talking about family tree and then about gardens. Uh, what is the connection between the family tree that look, sounds like garden and, <laughs> and the gardens we have around our houses or which you create then for people? What, how is the literal connection between these two things? The challenge, uh, well, the, the similarities between a family tree and the way individual people in a family, they stand in a family field, uh, to me the similarities to a garden, uh, they are quite there. They are quite, uh, they can be, o often in, uh, in the ancient, in our humanity, since the, beginning or recorded the history, the Garden of Eden and the Garden of the Prophet with uh, Khalil Gibran. The garden uh, in the history of humanity has been the symbolizing our journey as a people, as a humanities. 
to me, the value, the importance of the garden is the collective, the unity through the diversity, the importance to stand together in our differences uh, as uh, different plants in a common garden that is unifying humanity in a larger space that is bigger than us. Mm -hmm. I try to, you know, to follow uh, with my imagination what I can get out of that. You say that the family members are maybe like trees or like other plants in, yes. in, the, in, the, in the field, in the system. And uh, the relationship between these, uh, um, between these family members, you can see in the garden or in the garden, let's say the other way around, there are some plants in the garden which help each other to grow and there are other plants who don't stay well together. Is yes. that... Uh, uh... To me, the way, the way we have been doing gardening so far, uh, he has been uh, a reflection of our systems of belonging at the back of our mind. And I really believe that the way we do gardening, like any other activity, it is uh, an expression of uh, our belonging, uh, our systems of belonging, whether it is our uh, place, uh, land of origin, uh, or is our families of origin, uh, or our communities. Uh, we are uh, sometimes uh, unconsciously trying to express uh, the ideal belonging, the ideal plant, the ideal place uh, for the plant. Uh, I'm very convinced that we are uh, trying to express our inner connection to our uh, systems of belonging uh, because we are always connected to that. Uh, and uh, sometimes the expression, the outer expression is not always clear because uh, we have not really clarified inside uh, our uh, position or people places. So to experiment with a plant or not, to find a more aggressive plant uh, rather than another one, uh, to me, it should be the, the research of harmony, the research of um, equal belonging, of equal spaces to hurt out anything. Uh? Mm -hmm. And sometimes it can be really only experimenting, uh, but uh, I'm really, we discovered over the years, uh, starting with interior gardens with our customers, uh, that uh, their own gardening, uh, he has been transformed after we have been doing uh, constellation work between them uh, and their own garden. And uh, we started this uh, as a purely an intuition seven years ago. And uh, my that uh, was to bring the theory, the inner work of the integral work of the images that we discover during the systemic work or the constellation work, how I would translate it into a physical element in a garden. That was my initial uh, challenge that I could not find uh, how to do it in uh, reality as a, a real garden element. And so holding uh, this, uh, I started uh, this uh, seven years, uh, this uh, energy to anchor uh, this intuition uh, and start uh, looking into it and uh, having speaking to me uh, I wrote my first paper called uh, A Constellation Enlightens My Garden. And that was my first paper. It was the first document that I published. Uh, and uh, it was uh, the white paper. It was uh, the call, the abstract, uh, on how to land it into a physical space. And then the following years, uh, I kept uh, talking to facilitators, uh, to integral people, uh, especially in London. Uh, also here in uh, near Shrewsbury in Chester, we have uh, 
uh, Ty Francis is one of the leading uh, um, integralists and a guest artist uh, in the UK. He is one of the founders of uh, Nowhere. Mm -hmm. And uh, with him, uh, I've been doing uh, systemic work since 2012. And uh, we have identified together the purpose of integral gardens, uh, which is the reflection of uh, my inner journey and uh, our inner journey. And the, the purpose is uh, to create spaces uh, for peace and for beauty. Mm -hmm. I would like to share with you um, some beautiful thing, which is now at the present moment in my, it's not a garden, it's a sort of a courtyard. Can you see that? Oh, cosmoses. They're yeah, beautiful. An anemone, no? And daffodils. That and, is a palm. And now this is the, the uh, lemon tree, which I have covered uh, for winter. Okay. You know? And all these anemones. And this was my question. Uh, does it uh, say something about the people, which plants they like best and which they don't like or something like this? Yes, they do. And uh, I really believe... Uh, um, for example, uh, you just show me this beautiful picture and uh, it to me is quite clear that the lemon tree and the cosmos, uh, both the colors, uh, they are a reflection of uh, our inner chakras, uh, of uh, our connection uh, to the cosmos, our inner connection and our outer connection, which is what we individually is uh, our work, our journey. So the, the colors that uh, we choose uh, inside of us for our garden, they have to reflect our inner journey. And this is where uh, I was uh, wondering for so many years, uh, being in the uh, landscaping industry, I've been seeing my father, my brothers, uh, and uh, so many garden designers in Italy and outside of Italy. And I've been always been wondering uh, for the last 30 years uh, what it would make a client a garden, a unique garden of the customer, not of the garden designer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. To me, that is the garden. Yeah. The garden is an intimate space. And it has to be personal before then outer, before then in, in a garden. So to me, to be in service of a customer is no more and no less than being a facilitator uh, for a client. The gardening for me is exactly the same. The garden space has to be a reflection of the customer journey, whether it's an individual, whether it's a family, is a community, is a public park, is an organization. We for the IEC, I have uh, submitted the project uh, to create together, to co-create together in a collective process in Hungary one day, our revolutionary collective garden, the IEC garden. Mm -hmm. What it would be the garden of uh, the integral community in Hungary, how it would look. And so I have um, suggested, uh, I have uh, um, submitted the project, maybe in two years time, that uh, we are going to have uh, a constellation, everybody together. We are going to see together, we are going to access together, we are going to transfer it into a garden element, which I'm going to explain in a minute the solution we found, how to do it. And then we're going to plant it together with the elements of the system, how they translate into a physical space. Oh, that would be beautiful. We can design any purpose. We can design any meaningful question, again, being in service of the customer's journey. And that is what we do. We, we reflect in a, a physical space the energies that come from a customer systems uh, into garden uh, landscaping, uh, into elements of landscaping. And what we discovered uh, over the years, uh, experimenting, uh, talking to people, 
the turning point was uh, three years ago when uh, I did ask a facilitator in London uh, to have uh, a, an experimental workshop. If it was an idea that it was feasible or not, if it would work or not. So um, very generously, extremely generously, 15 uh, facilitators, uh, professional integralists, they turned up uh, to test this uh, idea for one day. And we were uh, in a room and uh, we ran this, uh, this day of uh, restoration, this day of experimenting, of inquiring into the past. And we chose uh, a very famous garden in Italy, which uh, I cannot name. And at the time, uh, my elder brother was restoring uh, for uh, these customers. Uh, and they are very well-known gardens in Italy. They were designed in the 1950s by an international garden designer. And uh, we tested it as a, a template, as a sample um, of what it would be the possibilities uh, of this uh, idea or not. Mm -hmm. And as soon as we started inquiring the original founder in the 1950s, uh, we had the confirmation that the communication between the customer and the garden designer, it was not complete. Mm -hmm. The personal information of the family, the customer, uh, it was not clear to the customer. So the elements that have been uh, given to the garden designer, they were uh, incomplete. They were uh, blind spots, like uh, they would be with everybody. They were dynamics not completed uh, within the family system. They were information that have been not clarified within the family. They have affected, they have impacted the work uh, of the garden designer. It was not complete. And this information uh, that he was missing, uh, we saw that he has impacted uh, in the fruition of this, cast, of this gardens until today. The so impact is still felt today. Can you give an example of what you mean? What, what is missing or what is going, let's say, going wrong in this garden now? We, and what because uh, these gardens today, they, they are not uh, uh, as popular as they used to be in the past. Uh, I chose uh, this uh, template uh, as uh, an example of uh, potential because uh, over the years uh, they are being uh, less and less popular. And uh, at the moment, uh, the original structure is still there, but is not as attractive and popular as it used to be with the staff, uh, with the current owners, uh, and with the public. That, for me, was uh, holding a very strong uh, systemic stance for exploration of uh, finding the original dynamics. So as soon as we started inquiring uh, the founder uh, through a representative, uh, the person that we that came up during the workshop, uh, he has been sharing with us uh, the same sentences, the same words uh, that uh, we read on a book that has been written by the the founders of this these gardens uh, uh, seventy years ago now. So that was for me the confirmation that uh, the the knowing field was accessible, the space was open. Mm -hmm. for inquiry. And so um, I did ask a question and I said uh, to the founder, uh, I said, uh, is this the garden that you really wanted? And she said to us, no, mm. this is not really what I, I really wanted inside of me. And so I said to her, uh, what he, he was really the garden that uh, you wanted for your family? And she said, uh, there are no spaces for children here. They have been not included. And so my question during the process was uh, what I call the garden insight. The garden insight is the foundation of integral gardens. The garden insight uh, is the gateway 
that uh, transforms uh, the system uh, energy or support uh, into a garden element that is uh, physical, that we can touch it today, but it is charged uh, with the energy of the system. Mm -hmm. And exactly. people today can see it. So um, I did ask uh, this question uh, and I said, uh, how can we see it uh, today in a garden? So she said to us, uh, I want you to build some uh, swing seats for children. Uh, I want you to build uh, some uh, spaces for children where they can play. And that was the first element of uh, garden landscape, which, uh, which he was charged with the energy of the family system or the customer, and is not charged uh, with the energy of the garden designer. That is the fundamental quality of this work. Then I did ask the following question, and I said to the customer, uh, what else is missing today? And she said to us, uh, there are no sheltered areas. Uh, the sky is always open everywhere you walk. Uh, there is no sheltering for people. So I said to her, uh, how can we do that today in a garden? And she said, I want you to plant uh, trees uh, with a tall canopy when people can walk underneath to provide the shade and protection. And then uh, after this question, I say to her, uh, uh, what else is missing in a garden today? And with that question, a woman uh, from the sofa in the room, uh, she stood up. And it was a woman from uh, South America. She was a facilitator. She was from Brazil. Uh, she went in the middle of the carpet and she started doing this to us. And uh, we say to her, uh, who are you? And she said, uh, I am the soul of the garden. And I haven't been seen until today. And I say to her, uh, why are you doing that? She said, uh, because I want you to build a fountain. So you're going to see me. Mm -hmm. And I said, what else do you want us to do? She said, I want you to build a fountain and also I want you to write the words at the base that describe me. Mm -hmm. During these uh, integrations, uh, this uh, work, uh, when we retrieve the garden insights, uh, each uh, element is charged with the energy of the system, but in a visible way. And every time we did a reintegration, it is exactly the same process of doing a, a trauma reintegration or a split in any system. It can be organizational, it can be a community, it can be a family garden. Every time we did a, a split reintegration, the representatives for the customers, they were coming closer because they left the circle and they were leaving the room. So we had a confirmation during this process that the blind spots, the processes that have been forgotten, the pain that has been not processed, it was impacting today the fruition. And we discovered the why. And this is a work that uh, a trauma therapist, they know very well uh, what it is. And uh, we found the translation of this work into a physical space. Mm -hmm. So today, um, we can offer this uh, gateway. Excuse me, I have to interrupt you. Sometimes the audio goes away. Have you covered the microphone? Maybe? Right. Sorry, I try no, to say it with my hands. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. So, in other words, uh, we found a way to do from the unknown into the known, uh, to anchor it uh, into a garden space, into a physical space, uh, an insight from a system, uh, a physical element, uh, which is going to inform the visitors uh, and the people uh, in a real way. Is not uh, an image that people bring home uh, after the session, it stays in the mind. It is uh, a physical reminder. 
but something that uh, I must share, which is uh, extremely important. Uh, I discovered after a few years of doing this work with different customers, uh, I discovered an extremely important uh, connection that uh, it unifies uh, all the garden insights with uh, any customer. The element uh, that uh, they all have in common, uh, all the garden insights, uh, each one, uh, it is an uh, ongoing energy. Mm -hmm. It is not uh, a point uh, fixed in time that is static. Every insight, every energy that was manifested into the garden, uh, it is uh, renewable. It goes into the future. It does evolve. It is a connection to the inner systems that keeps informing in the future. It keeps changing. Mm -hmm. So it's not uh, a one-time information. It's not uh, a one-off information. And this was an extraordinary discovery that uh, I discovered doing this work. So it was uh, another um, exploration, mm -hmm. another result that came up doing this work so let me go to a, a practical aspect if you have created a garden for somebody and this somebody is happy about it and then afterwards either they maintain it well or they don't or they want to do changes yes what does that then mean in it in is a wonderful question and thank you for asking me this because i was really hoping to share this uh, next uh point which is uh equally important uh, a few years ago in 2017 we we started uh, doing uh integral garden with uh, some customers in cheshire that was uh, started uh, seven years ago. And then um, one day talking to the customer, we were talking about my journey, my personal uh, situations with uh, constellation work uh, and in systemic work on me, on a family. And um, one day I started sharing my idea to create integral gardens. And this customer said to me, why don't we try here? That was the first time that uh, I had uh, the real opportunity to test it with the client. And what came up, uh, it was another surprise because uh, I'm learning more and more that doing this, uh, I have to stay with a blank mind because this is a, a work of uh, purely service of the unknown. And so I discovered that the only way this works is to not assume. Mm -hmm. And so this customer said to me, I would be happy if you want to have a look at this garden and see what it is, what is available for going forward. And so that day I booked a session with somebody in London and uh, we did uh, an online session on a carpet in my house. And uh, we discovered that these, uh, these energies that have been forgotten since 100 years ago. And uh, this customer uh, said to me, I am losing inspiration for my garden. I don't know what to do next. I'm stuck. And I've been planting this garden for 10 years and now it's like I have enough. I don't know what to do and uh, I'm making mistakes. And... Uh, because I shared the, the opportunities and the possibilities of systemic work, uh, she said to me, I would be happy you explore this for me. So during that constellation, uh, because I expressly requested the permission to access a field, uh, and she granted me permission, the field uh, during that constellation, it came up very fluid. Mm -hmm. It was very accessible. And uh, we went back in time to 100 years ago to the original uh, owners uh, of this place. Uh, and uh, he came up that they had uh, no idea what to do with this space. Uh, and uh, definitely not as an uh, ornamental space for family leisure at all. And so this lack of uh, purpose, uh, 
this uh, not knowing what to do, it looks like it has been passed down to the following owners, uh, and it looks like they came down. So during that piece of work, uh, we started working with these uh, energies during the timeline that uh, they were stuck. It was the, it came up uh, things extraordinary, like the garden purpose for life. Energies like that, they have been not acknowledged. They have been not uh, recognized. And so many other different energies, like the house and the garden, they were not talking to each other. Mm. And uh, there were so many different elements. It, to me, it was like a, a fountain coming from nowhere, all these elements. And having been doing this work for generations is extraordinary that all of these things that have been waiting for so many generations already there. And this is the fundamental reality of doing systemic work where we see what has been available since the beginning, has been there all the time. And so to restore, to retrieve these challenges and these opportunities has been a, a huge privilege and for me. And then the spirit of the place, it was another energy that came that was connecting the current owners to the place. And the, a very strong sentence came up from the spirit of the place. They say to, to the owner, he said, I was here before you and I will be after you. And that sentence shifted the energy of the, the whole constellation. But uh, at the end of this uh, one hour work, this one hour process, uh, we discovered that uh, the customer intention, the hidden purpose, the customer intention, uh, it was to restore the timeline for going forward. Uh, but we discovered that uh, that piece of work for that client, uh, it had to do with uh, restoring uh, their creative tension. Mm -hmm. So we discovered at the end of the constellation that the garden and the customer, they were looking at each other again. Where before each one was looking different directions. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. So when I went to the client the next day, because they didn't want to be involved in a constellation personally, so I discovered that how my role could serve that as well. It was another experiment for Integral Gardens. When I went there the next day, and she said to me, what did he come up? And I said, uh, all, all he came to my, my mouth, I said to her, uh, in the moment, uh, I said, uh, your uh, creative tension has been restored. And she looked at me and she looked at the ground and she said, I know what you mean. Mm -hmm. And then a few weeks went and I left with her. And after a few months, she started to have information again. She started to engage with the garden again. It was uh, left really grown a lot. It was uh, quite untidy. And they had an amount of uh, family challenges going on. And they had to suspend doing the garden. And uh, they hired me seven years ago to restore the space. But uh, since that day, he shifted the quality or the engagement between the customer and their personal space. He became again uh, a charged relationship. A, a relationship of the differences. Mm -hmm. It started to be a creative relationship uh, or through the tension of the seasons, the tension of the opposites, uh, through the winter and the summer, the rain and the, um, and the sunshine, uh, the disappointment with uh, not working uh, a scheme of uh, not uh, putting a weight on expectations uh, into the garden uh, during the design and so on. So, it was an, a matter of uh, finding a stance of being creative in tension, uh, accepting that nature is uh, beyond us. And this is like he lifted the burden of the customer. It's like he lifted that weight of expectations on themselves 
on the family, on the relationships, and it was impacting into the garden experience, the garden design. And since that day, things transformed. Mm -hmm. The curve of the garden, uh, it transformed completely. And uh, the clarity of the interventions, the clarity of the planting, uh, it was like some days uh, where uh, I left entirely to the client their own relationship to the space while I do my own work on maintenance. It's like some days I could see the, these uh, sudden actions. It's like a, a Zen intervention out of nowhere of uh, that element, uh, that plant uh, put in there and nothing else. It's like it was uh, a missing element that uh, it restored uh, an entire area out of nowhere. Mm. So I've been discovering these things for the first time. And this is uh, another uh, service, another uh, element that we bring to our customers. Uh, and this service, uh, it can be perfectly provided to a client in their own house, in the garden, or to a garden designer. Mm -hmm. It can be a landscape architect, it can be an engineer, it can be a studio. We can provide any kind of facilitation according uh, to the client situation and the client requirement, uh, which we explore during the interview. And then we open what the possibilities are, what the, what the support is. Well, that, that was interesting. That has opened my imagination in many ways because I was thinking where you said this opening the energies, I had a long time now, several years of not being very much interested anymore. I don't have a garden. I have ground around the house, no. you know, but and this year, I again had the impulse to cut, uh, to prune the olive trees. And I love to do that. And I was thinking something maybe have changed. And when you tell me this, I mean, I had never heard about this before, no? but I, I, I'm committed to, to observe yes. what the garden will tell me, or the garden, the house, the, yes. the, house, yes. the, the, the ground around. Because I've never thought about that. Never thought about that there might be also a message from past owners, from past generations, and that I still might be dealing with that without yes. knowing it. Yes. So that's, I, I, I really do thank you for that because it's a completely new, for me, completely new uh, way of looking at. Well, to me, the, the reason why I started uh, thinking in this way of uh, a garden space or a park, uh, my first teacher was uh, Francesca Maison Boring. And uh, she has been my, really my first teacher. She's uh, a Native American and uh, she travels the world. She's very well known. And I really wish one day I can meet her. And uh, she does uh, nature constellations. Uh, as she's a Native American, uh, she's a constellator. Mm -hmm. That is where I started uh, learning from a book uh, called um, Reclaiming Earth Membership. It's about people uh, in nature. Mm -hmm. And this is our relationship to the environment. Uh, what is the role of humanity in the environment? Uh, how we relate into that? Uh, and this has been my inspiration to me since uh, seven years ago, eight years ago, while I was doing my own work and my own uh, wound, my own uh, challenges, uh, it started coming to me. It was already there. And so over the years, uh, working with uh, organizational constellators, uh, working with the business constellators, uh, I discovered uh, how in an organization, the past traumas uh, in a system, uh, they are passed down to the following managers, to the following uh, owners, to the following staff. And so having all this information coming together, when I contacted uh, one of the facilitators in London, uh, he is uh, specialized uh, in uh, trauma, uh, work reintegration in uh, family constellations and organizational uh, constellations and the systemic work. And so I brought everything together 
to see if he was coming uh, to anything. Uh, and we discovered exactly that in a garden system, like in a park, a public park, uh, the human experiences of the past, uh, they are passed down to the people who follow, one mm. way or another. They mm. inform the maintenance, uh, they inform the design, uh, they inform the fruition. Exactly in the same way in an organization, a trauma from the founder is uh, unresolved, is passed down to the following owners uh, in a repeating pattern. Mm -hmm. In the same way, it does apply perfect in a garden because it's an organization. Mm -hmm. And uh, when we go to the bigger, even bigger picture, how the world is looking now at the moment, uh, that can tell us a story about humanity. Exactly. Where our traumas are, you know, where, where the unresolved traumas are visible in the big holes of quarries in, 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 in the landscape and totally. devastation but about everything. It is, but for example, doing a, for a customer project, uh, for a, a client, a single client or a group of people, a family, or doing the mapping. Mm -hmm. When we do the initial mapping of the family system or the organizational system, uh, we can find the colors that they connect the chakras uh, to the inner uh, journeys, uh, to the cosmic energies, uh, and that is reflected into the garden design, into the colors of the flowers. So, for example, the picture that you showed to me before, or the lemon tree and the cosmoses, uh, they are telling me that uh, your own energies, or you as a person, uh, in your journey, you are really informed by the male, by the energy of the fathers. This is coming to me as an intuition. I see that beautiful yellow there in the middle of the palm tree, and it goes with the lemon tree that is wrapped at the moment. Uh, yeah. That yellow, which is the sun, is telling me, together with this uh, purple, this violet and purple, to me, you are saying to me that uh, the male energy, the father energy, is a team, is a, a part of a journey which is relevant. And so this is already an information that, uh, to me, is quite clear. Mm. But for some customers, it could not be clear. And so this is another uh, service that uh, we offer. Yeah, wonderful. Uh, it's it's. I'm I'm. Thank you for for this conversation. It has really opened Can my you? mind, and I I don't yet really get the the picture together completely. But it's it's a new way for exploration, you know, for me to 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 see nature around me in a different, in a different way, and asking what does it say about me, and what does it say about about who was here before. I, I have to say that these uh, flowers I didn't plant. Some of them were yes, here absolutely. already and then they, they uh, proliferated and now it's all... Well, they are so beautiful. Yeah. They are so beautiful, Heidi. And uh, to me, this is telling me why this land chose you. And this is also, you know, that's a part of this land which I really looking forward every year. And there is this uh, Herbert Tribolina thing coming up. And yes. you see all these grasses. I, in, the, in the winter, I go there and get out as much of the other stuff yeah. so that they won't uh, cover these anemones because it's really, that's for me the, the most delightful thing of my whole It life. is. But uh, we say when we do systemic work, uh, we see how going forward into the future, how our parents' uh, energy, it comes with us mm -hmm. and uh, they stay with us wherever we go in the world. So when uh, there is a land or a garden uh, that is uh, providing this uh, holding this space, because nature is in service of us, this planet uh, is for our journey. Even if uh, Gaia as a one planet is on his own journey as well, as a one reality is also everything of this is in our service. So when uh, we are the owners of a garden, uh, we are not the owners of a garden. That garden shows us. Mm -hmm. And so it's uh, holding the space uh, with uh, that spontaneity 
which we know is not a coincidence. Uh, we can call it synchronicity, we call it how we like it, uh, we know it's not a coincidence. And uh, this is the energy of our parents and family system that is coming into the world to, with us to be seen. Mm -hmm. That we are not really separated. So the, my last question before we have to wrap up is you said this is father energy. And this is, makes me curious because my father died 40 years ago. And it was a hard time for me. About 20 years, I, I, I didn't really accept that he was dead. So can you see the, um, or tell me what that means, father energy, and what could that be that there is the time to, or that it helped to, to, I don't know. <laughs> well, we generally as a, as a, um, a family facilitation, as a family systems, uh, we, um, uh, the, the scope, the, the purpose of uh, our family energies uh, is to support our journey into the world, into the outer world, uh, without losing the support from our family systems, that uh, we have the support in us. And this is essentially the father energy is to provide us uh, our connection to our mother love. Mm -hmm. To keep our mother love. That is our heart. That is what we bring into the world, uh, which is uh, also has to do with our inner child. So our father's role, our father's work uh, in a mother and father uh, relationship, uh, when they have a child, uh, the father role is to teach, to enable, to train the child to keep the love from the mother and not lose it, to protect it. Because every child has a boat and every child is in a space between both parents. It's not or mother or father, which sadly does happen quite often. In the integral gardens, we bring uh, quite an amount of wounds with us of our inner journey. And uh, one layer of the work we do, he has to do with uh, parentification. Mm -hmm. And uh, we bring our own experiences, uh, our own uh, work on uh, disconnections, on uh, covert bonds, which uh, is a very strong... Uh, um, holding space for our work, for uh, health, for supporting people's health. And uh, Francisca also, um, she would be at the conference presenting with us. Uh, she's uh, trained in uh, family constellations uh, and she's also an artist and musician. And she works with children. And she does uh, constellation work with parents and children. And this is a very strong uh, contribution. Is uh, a pillar of integral gardens, because uh, I strongly believe that uh, in our journey as people into the world, when uh, we when we are born, we grow in a house in a family. The first space we meet is the garden. It can be a public park if we live in a flat. But the stepping into the garden, it is the metaphor of our journey to the world. Mm -hmm. And that stepping out of the house, uh, that uh, leaving the mother love, mm -hmm. it has to include the father energy, which in our society is uh, too often is absent for mm -hmm. many different reasons that uh, there is nobody to blame. It's the culture. And this is where our interventions go. We, our work it does uh, restore uh, what there is already in a more visible way of the father energy, the mother energy together. And this is the work that collectively we do. And uh, we are a team of people working together in Tigro Gardens. And uh, mm -hmm. some are facilitators, some are landscapers. Uh, we all do our integral work. We all do our systemic work in different ways. Yeah, can you, for uh, the uh, watchers, say your website, where they can learn? 
<laughs> there is uh, one uh, one design that we offer that I would really love to share uh, in this video. And I don't know if we're going to meet in another video again in the future, because there is so many things that we're discovering, that we're doing. There are so many topics that uh, we can design, that can come up. But uh, something that is very dear to me is uh, a design that we offer for uh, public uh, spaces, for uh, parks, for communities, for the collective, for cities. And I called it uh, from land of origin to land of immigration, park. If uh, a council, a community, a city, a, um, a quarter, they will contact us and they say, can you create our uh, public park uh, our, um, for our community? What we would do, firstly, we will map the nationalities that are present in that community. We are going to do a mapping and retrieving uh, of the energies that support the citizens from the land of origin, that support them abroad. So for each nation, uh, we will identify a, the energy, the support that comes from the land of origin. We, we are going to identify the gardening site for it. And we are going to create that element in the park for that nation. Mm -hmm. So this means that every citizen from that nation in the world, uh, in the park, uh, they are going to see the inspiration, the support, and the strength from the land of origin while they live abroad. That's a nice idea. Very nice idea. So when people want to find out about you, where do I send them? Where do we send them? Our uh, website is called uh, integralgardens.com and uh, the information uh, and the services we offer, uh, they are on the home page and the second page, there are our profiles, uh, there are the services we offer uh, and they're called the About Us page. And the home page, uh, it does share the philosophy of the work, the approach that we do. And the second page is the practical solutions, the practicalities, how it does happen in reality in the garden. And if you want so, to, <laughs> as a conclusion, I can, uh, in few seconds, uh, I can share the structure of the presentation uh, in Hungary, how we're going to present in, uh, at the end of May. Yeah, if you want to, but make it short because we are already talking quite a while, short. an hour. <laughs> it's a lot of elements, I know. It's, it's very brief. Okay. It's only 20 minutes presentation. And um, Francisca is going to start with a guided meditation with the, in a room with people coming. And she is going to guide us. She has been working with Jan Jacob as well on this in Holland. And um, she's going to guide us into a guided meditation where we are going to visualize our inner garden that bring us peace and happiness inside of us. And then uh, once we find it, what it is individually, then we are going to bring into our collective garden, into our integral garden, where we are all together in our differences, uh, into one holding space that is going to hold uh, each one of us together. And that is going to be the introduction to our presentation is going to be to enter into the space together. And then uh, after that, I'm going to share the slideshows on the screen of the services I just mentioned today. Britain, on some examples of the work, what we discovered over the years. And then at the end, we're going to have uh, questions and answers. And mm -hmm. we're going to create together the session. Yeah, wonderful. So. Thank you, thank you very much. And thank you. we will meet, hopefully, we will meet in, uh, in Hungary at the end of May. That would be wonderful. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you for having us. <laughs> Bye.